So I got some new hex free free board PCBs and I'm going to do a test assembly here and I figured uh, I might practice recording the whole thing and uh, doing some voiceover editing and all of that. So let's see how that goes. This is uh, a board revision, this is the second revision of the board and I kind of wish I hadn't ordered this when I did. Uh, I sent it off to be made right before uh, two weeks of vacation. Uh, thinking that that way, you know, it will uh, be manufactured and shipped back to me in the meantime, and then I come back to these fresh boards. But actually, in the vacation, I showed off the board to a bunch of people, and uh, like pretty early on, I realized a couple of things that I really had to change. Even before they actually came back to me, I already knew that there were some changes to be made. Um, so yeah, I kind of wish I held off on that one. Also because I fell into the, the usual trap uh, of hoping that this might be the, the last uh, revision of the board. And so I ordered 10 units when really I should have just gotten five. That was to be expected, you know, that there might be some, some more changes at that point. So anyway, I started here by assembling the back side of the board because that's where the bulk of the components are and also the heavier ones. So if I solder this one first, it's actually easier because on the other side, I just need to heat it up very briefly to solder on the LEDs and there's less risk of things coming off the other side. So the first step is to put on solder paste. Uh, so I'm using some other PCBs as spacers. Um, taping them down with this blue tape to make sure that the, the PCB in the middle is like rigidly aligned and doesn't shift underneath the stencil when I'm doing the stenciling. So I can, I can check that here in a moment with the finger, some wiggle and it's all pretty stable so that's great. For aligning the stencil I usually just check two points uh, in like opposite ends of the PCB and if those two are both perfectly aligned then everything in between should be as well. Um, using this temperature stable solder paste uh, that doesn't need to be refrigerated which is really nice for like, a hobbyist like me that doesn't use a lot of solder paste uh, this should last at least a year outside of the fridge uh, it says upwards of a year so I'm, I'm hoping that this can last me you know, even way longer than that I, honestly just based on the amount that I'm using right now and I'm using these uh, steel squeegees I think these are like for, for mixing paint and scraping it or something, but uh, they, they work pretty well for this. Um, just putting the solder paste on the squeegee, I found that to be easier than actually putting it on the, on the stencil. And then I'm just gonna drag it across. So you can see here a couple of things. So my, my technique is not great. And also the stencil, you can see the stencil kind of floats uh, above the PCB. There's like a decent gap. Every time I let go, it kind of pops up, which is not great. Uh, and you can also see my technique here is not, uh, not quite right. Uh, I should really be pushing it across and not leaving anything behind. Instead, I'm kind of like squishing it down, like making a, a layer and then scraping off the excess. That works okay most of the time, but I had some issues with some of this board, as you'll see later. Since this is such a big board uh, with a lot of small pads, as you can see, kind of spread out all over the surface, I'm doing this in small passes rather than going across the whole board. I don't have a squeegee that big, and also I find it hard to control everything. But you can actually see me miss a pad there in the top right uh, and have to fix that later along with some other pads I'm just not stenciling well enough. And when I'm done I try to collect the bulk of the excess uh, solder paste and just put it back in a jar. It should be fine to reuse another day. comes the stencil and here you can see that where uh, I checked it actually looks pretty good it's just that there's some areas that just didn't get enough solar paste 
And so now it's time to place components. So I'm uh, using a cheap vacuum pump um, with this lure lock uh, needles. Uh, and there's just a hole in the tube that I'm holding. And when I lift my index finger, that uh, relieves the, the vacuum for the little hole that's drilled there. And so the component can fall. Works OK. I'm placing these components from uh, Robin's Tools um, SNT magazines, which I find them really handy for this because the, the components don't jump around when you feed the tape. Uh, and they're easy to grab with the pump. Here's another mistake that I'm making. Uh, I'm just not aligning this uh, RP2040 board well enough. This is the uh, Solder Party RP2040 stamp. So if you look carefully on the bottom there, uh, the, the pins on the bottom are just not uh, perfectly aligned with the pads underneath them. It's shifted slightly to the left. So the whole module is kind of rotated and that actually ended up shorting some pins underneath. And I only realized that way later when I had some issues with some GPIO pins. So I actually had to reflow that whole stamp daughter board, which was a pain. Here I'm putting on some diodes. Uh, there should, as you can see, there should be some capacitors and resistors there, uh, but that's one of the changes that I made to the PCB afterwards, uh, turning this port from an audio port into an I2C port. And so I'm trying that uh, just on this PCB right away. You can see here I'm adding some extra solder paste on that uh, diode pad up there because that's the one that I actually missed completely while stenciling earlier. actually skip one here and I didn't notice that until I was soldering so I had to put it on much later. Putting on these little diodes is really finicky uh, because they really like to fall over and they have these really little legs and the pads are just so small that there's just the tiniest bit of solder paste uh, and so they don't stick on very well. They often fall over or they get blown away while soldering as well. And you can see me here also add uh, solder paste um, manually just kind of smear it on the pads after the fact. And that's because there's just some that just have too little. So I'm definitely gonna make bigger pads for these in the future so that there's just more solder paste to hold them down. So that's the bottom of the board populated. So I'm just gonna take it out of this little jig here and clear the table so that uh, we can reflow this without heating and warping any of the other boards and stuff that's around. And if you look carefully, there's still that one missing diode. Uh, yeah, gonna take care of that a bit later.
I didn't get much useful footage of the soldering because the camera is kind of in the way for the heat gun, but hopefully I can find out a solution for that in the future. Once the back side is done, it's time to do the same on the front. Since there's parts on the front, now I need to put some spacers behind it to get the board to sit flat. So I'm just using some laser cut MDF rests, because there's a lot of them available, they just come out of the recycling bin, and they're all the same height. You can see here how the stenciling technique isn't really working for the large pads of the audio jacks. Somehow I also managed to completely miss the pads of these two LEDs over here. Although they're pretty small, placing the LEDs is actually really easy with the vacuum pump. I only have a couple of short strips of 10 LEDs each, so they don't fit into the SMD magazines very well. So instead I'm using some double-sided sticky tape here to stick down the strips and I'm putting them in alternating directions because some of the LEDs have to be the other way around, as you'll see in a second.
You can see that with the tape in position and everything lined up, it really takes just a couple of seconds to place each LED. It's much, much quicker than the diodes from the other side. Now I tin the pads that I missed or that didn't get enough solder paste. Just looking to have like an even amount of solder on each of the four pads here. After that I can put on some flux paste. This helps the solder reflow but more importantly it holds the LED in place so that the hot air doesn't blow it away. And then I can put those LEDs on top as well. This is the protection chip, should have been one of the easiest components to place, but it took like a whole minute of fumbling to get it into position. And then right when I was done, I made a bad movement with this vacuum hose and I knocked that IC and like six LEDs off the board and I had to put them all back into position after. Again, I didn't really manage to film a lot of the soldering. Maybe next time with a real camera that has optical zoom, I'll be able to catch some of the actual reflowing. After this, I didn't record much because the whole process was taking kind of long. 
but that's a boring way to end the video. So instead, I'm going to show you two clips from an Arbuvu live coding performance later that day, where Nicola actually used one of the prototypes uh, to play some melody into the mix. <laughs> 